Hello, Nuffers, the Sun of Spring has come and so did if no. And today we will go in depth on who is Cassie, can we trust Gregory, which Andrew is Kevin, and who is the Shadow Glitch, as they all are interconnected with each other. I did not have time to talk about them in the last video, where I analyzed the trailer, so here we go. Let's first start here with Gregory, as he will be the starting point of our theories today. Here is what Gregory says in the trailer. Cassie, I hope you get this message. I'm trapped. Here at the pizza plex, or what's left of it. I don't have time to go into how I got here, but you've got to help me out. Save me, Cassie, please. It's so dark down here. Has he heard Gregor said that he is trapped at the Pizzaplex? Now, there are two possibilities here. Either Gregory escaped and then came back for some reason, like Vanny kidnapped him and then he got trapped there, or he never even escaped the building. You might at first think that Gregory escapes in every ending. He steals the car or he walks out of the doors, either through the main ones or through the fire exit, and then sits on a hill in the morning or is killed by Vanny. But you would actually be wrong. In the trailer he also says that it is dark down here, which perhaps means that he is trapped under the pizzaplex, and the only time we see Gregory go under the pizzaplex is in the burn trap ending, in which we don't actually see Gregory exit the building. As the FNAF 6 pizzeria collapses, we see them running trying to save themselves, but then it cuts to them sitting on a hill, which could be at any time after the ending, even after the ruin, and we don't know how they got out of there. And what makes this make even more sense for Gregory to be trapped there is that when we go down the elevator to the underground, which is the only way to get there, Freddy tells us that the elevator is really dangerous and will probably last only one trip down, which means that most likely they would not be able to get out of there using the only way to get down there. We also see in the trailer that the pizza box is really ruined, its glass is broken, lights are falling down, all mini golf curses are flipped on their sides, and in the teaser we saw a broken down golden glamour fray statue in the lobby, and in the game there are only two endings in which the pizza plex is ruined, the fire ending in which the building is set on fire, but let's be honest, a fire would not flip a whole mini golf curse on its side like an earthquake would, only burn it, and also in that ending we see a newspaper saying that the pizza plex burned to the ground, and a picture of it, which means that if this ending was canon, then there would be no pizza plex in the ruin, but on the other hand, in the burn trap ending, the FNAF 6 pizzeria is set on fire, which causes the whole underground section to collapse, which would trap Gregory and also make the whole pizza plex start to collapse a little like if there was an earthquake. And in the trailer it does look like that. And to top all of that up, in the Nintendo Switch version of the game, the burn trap ending is called True Ending Burn Trap. In the code, and it is the only ending with 3D animated heel scene. All of this together confirms that the burn trap ending is the canon ending of the game. Or is it? We'll return to it later in this video. Ok, so we figured out how Gregor would be trapped at the pizza box, but how did he survive? Because in the trailer we see that the window is covered in newspapers, which people do when they are renovating a place, and there are things across the pizza place that weren't there before like letters, boxes, forklifts, packets and maps, and many other things, and the walls are covered in graffiti, which all indicate that it has been weeks or even months since the events of security breach. Now how did Gregor survive all this time under the pizza place? 
Some people theorize that maybe Gregory is not Gregory and is actually a character from the books called the Mimic, who mimics other people and here he is trying to lure Hesse because in the books he pretended to be one of the protagonists and try to lure others into the pizza fights and if I am not mistaken FNAF 6 pizzeria under it to kill them. Here's the quote. Tell me, I'm trapped in the old pizzeria, the voice said. Kelly looked up at Lucia. It's the mimic, Lucia said. But in the first teaser for FNAF Ruin, we saw Gregory on the cameras, running and asking for help. And even in the trailer, we see Cassie get out a walkie tag and yell for Gregory to run away. Which probably means that she saw him on the cameras being in danger. Gregory could have told her that there is a strange animatronic in front of him and that's why she tells him to run. But then she wouldn't have gotten out her walkie talkie cause then it would already be up cause Gregory just spoke through it. So I think that we do see Gregory here. And yes, we did see in the books not so long ago that Mimic literally put on a suit with Kelly, still inside it, basically putting himself into her, like into a suit in the process too, and killing her that way. But this is not an inner situation where Anard scooped out all of Mike's inner organs, built himself a body that could adjust so they could fit into a corpse. No! This mimic guy is literally just a glamour like Ando that just climbs inside a person or just smashes themselves into the person without any preparation. Seriously, Anard should really teach the mimic how to properly prepare a turkey. But this means that even if Mimi for some reason tried to put on Gregory as a suit, well, he would probably not fit into him because Gregory is really small compared to Glamrock, Andros and Burnshaw. And so Gregory's body would be really mangled. And even if he was the same size as Gregor, still Gregory's bones would start to stick out uh, and he would be covered in blood. And well, nobody would mistake Mimic inside Gregor for Gregor visually in this situation. Some people would also say that Mimic is using an illusion disc to look like Gregory, which would make sense. If it wasn't for the fact that we will see Gregory on cameras and not with our own eyes, cause as we all already know, illusion teas make the person wearing them to appear blurred out on photos and all of the other devices like cameras. So no, Mimic can be using illusion disc here to look like Gregory either. And so I would assume that Gregory here is actually the real Gregory. But how did he survive for this long under the pizza plaque then? There are a few possibilities here. He could have escaped and returned for some reason, like I mentioned before. But he could be a robot. Now, I was not a fan of Gregory Birth Theory, but it works really well here. Because if Gregory was a robot, then he would not need to eat or drink. And so in turn survive under the pizza plex for this long. In the books there was a character named Gregory in the story Chichi Wai, who seems uh, to probably be our Gregory. In the story it is revealed that Chichi Wai has scores on our case belong to Gregory like we thought and he is climbing for a six and he lures the therapist from the school into the pizza plex, just like many of us thought at first. And he is a hacker, which would explain how he contacted Cassie. And even though we theorize that Gregory in the game is homeless, in the story he does have parents, yet he still acts a little strange sometimes like if he was a robot. And those parents could have adopted him or something, perhaps Gregory was deactivated for some time and then activated and started to roam and then he was found and adopted or something. So he still could be a robot, which would explain why he was the bad guy at first in the story but then changed into the good guy in the game. 
But there is a teeny tiny problem here with this theory. If Gregory was a robot, he would have illusion discs that made him look real. But just like with the Mimic, then he would appear blurred out on cameras, while in FNAF SP we can clearly see Gregory on cameras. No, only Child Charlie and Adult Charlie were confirmed to use illusion discs, and it is still unknown if Teen Charlie had illusion discs, but I would assume she does too, so it is still possible that Gregory is a robot. But the possibility is low because of the discs. Okay, so Gregory is Gregory, and not the Mimic, and probably not a robot. And he got stuck under the pizza flats after the burn shop ending. But why does he call Cassie for help? Out of all people, like police or parents, why Cassie? And who even is Cassie? If Gregory was the Mimic, then he probably would have tried to lure her but as I said, I don't think this is the Mimic, or at least not physically, because some people also think that maybe Glitchup or Mimic digitally possessed Gregory and he is trying to lure Cassie, which I guess is possible, as Glitchup did possess Vanessa, while Mimic somehow got into the head of a kid in one of the new stories, sharing one brain with him. And maybe this possession thing could have some remnant involved which can keep a person alive like Gregory in this situation, uh, if Gregory is not a robot. And at the end of the trailer, he said, Don't give up on me yet. Which could mean that he is possessed by Glitchrap, but knows how Cassie could free him. This line really caught my attention when I heard it in the trailer, and so I found this theory interesting. But we don't have much evidence for it. Though, no matter if he is possessed by Glitchup, a robot or none, uh, I think he does indeed need Cassie's help to escape. And I have an idea on why he called Cassie specifically. As we know, in one of the endings, Gregor slept in a box in an alley after escaping the pizza plex, even though we now know he does have parents. So why did he not run to them? Well, then I could have killed them and so if Gregor would call police after they saved him, he would go to the orphanage, which he probably would not want to go to, or which I think is more possible. He ran away from home, and he can't call the police or his parents, cause they would find him and bring him home. And the only person he knows that would not snitch, and is his friend, is Cassie. Though we see Gregory communicate through the rocks of Walkie Talkie, so maybe he could contact someone only through this toy, Walkie Talkie, and Cassie just so happens to have one. But I think the previous option is more likely, because Cassie doesn't seem to be just a random girl. She has some interesting connection to the lore, and Gregory specifically calls her. As he says, Cassie, I hope you get this message. Which could take place at any point of the game, but I think this is from the beginning. She could be Gregory's friend from school, or she could be someone who has been pulling the strings of Gregory all along working with him trying to stop the murders, because as we remember, for us to get the burn shop ended, we need to stay at the Beatsplex when we are at the doors, and Gregory would ask Frey about if he will leave, will the murders continue? Now, we'll talk about Casey in just a moment, but before that, I want to ask you to please subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my videos, and press the like button with a bell. Now, even if Casey is Gregory's best friend and has been working with him on their secret missions, who is Cassie? Have we seen her before? Well, we talked about some theories last year about her, but now that we have more information, let's talk about some of them again. 
First of all, I thought about how she could be Vanessa's little sister. But as we now know, Cassie has brown hair and not blonde. And there is not much evidence for her being connected to Vanessa anymore because of that. But she does have brown hair, just like Gregory. So what if she is Gregory's sister? It would make sense for Gregory to call his sister for help. But in the new blog post, it was said that Cassie is Gregory's friend. So let's talk about the other two theories, which actually have more connections now, and that I thought are most likely even last year. People have been talking about how Cassie sounds a lot like Cassidy and Charlie, and even though I don't see how Cassie sounds like Charlie, I do see the connection between them. In the trailer and teasers we saw a lot of purple and green. In the first teaser, the title Ruin and Date 2023 at the bottom were purple, probably hinting at Burn Trap, while Gregory asking for help, text was green. On the computer teaser, the steel wool logo was purple and had a green reflection, but that looked the opposite way. And then in the trailer we see that Cassie has green nails, while in the FNAF SB trailers we saw that Vanessa had purple nails. In all of these examples, we had purple and green representing the opposites of each other, Gregory and Burntrap, Cassie and Vanessa. And even if we invert purple and green in a software, we'll get green and purple again being opposites. But where else did we see the opposite sides being purple and green before in FNAF? Purple was always William's color, even his nickname was for a long time, and still is, the purple guy. While green was multiple times associated with one of the main characters of the franchise that wore on a good side and pulled the story forward, Charlie, aka Puppet, who brought to life the missing children and who is the main protagonist of the FNAF novels. Most of the time we see Charlie visualize she wears something green. In the FNAF novels, Teen Charlie is always seen wearing a green jacket, and Child Charlie is always wearing a green shirt. While in the games, Charlie wore a green bracelet which was a sign to the puppet who had green eyes, and who was created by Charlie's father, who is an opposite to William. Both were the founders of Freys, but one became the villain, while the other was the one to stop the evil in FNAF 6. So the ruiner might have connections to Charlie, so what if Cassie is Charlie? Charlie has died many years ago, so how would she be Cassie, who is alive and a child? Well, as we all already know, in the novels, after Charlie died, Henry built her as four different robots, which were meant to represent her as a toddler, child, teen, and an adult. Now let's take a look at Child Charlie here, not it's anything familiar? In most of the illustrations for the FNAF novels, Child Charlie and even Toddler Charlie had brown hair with small pigtails, just like Cassie over here. And there has been actually a lot of things in Security Breach that connected to Charlie, even before Ruin. The door to the post-it notes room is called Charlie Door, unlike other doors that use its model and texture. And all over the pizza plex, we see nightmarian flashes and even the broken stuff bots have nightmarian faces on them. And we even see the Ella doll on one of the arcade cabinets in Security Bridge, who was Child Charlie in the books. And I have made multiple theories on how Charlie is in Security Breach, and so I really love this theory. But just like with Gregory, Charlie bots use solution discs to look real, and we do see Cassie on cameras in the trailer, and in the books we do see that Child Charlie uses illusion discs. But there is a possibility that Steel has changed things around and 
game's child child won't your solution this to look real. But let's talk about the other theory. Cassie is short for Cassidy, and this could be just Scott and still was throwing another chair situation at us. But I think this is not the case, or at least not entirely. I think that she is just a kid named Cassidy, and it's not literally her. But she does have connection to her, and it's more of a metaphor. Yes, as I said, there are problems with Cassie being a bot. And there is nobody to rebuild Cassidy as a robot, unlike for Charlie or Quan Chat. Though some people think that a girl with small pigtails in the logbook is Cassidy, which makes them connect the pigtails to Cassie, but it is not enough evidence. Though if Cassie is Cassidy and Gregory is crying child, both rebuilt as robots or somehow possess the kids, it would be an interesting option since both are probably in Golden Freddy. Also, just to throw this out, in Snuffy's Bill we saw a picture of a girl with one small brown pigtail in a red shirt, laying in the FNAF 4 bed, and people said that this was Cassidy somehow, but now she looks a lot like Cassie, who people also now connect to Cassidy, which is interesting. Throughout the whole trailer we see things that in back at the Princess Quest ending, we find Shadow Freddy on a pile of stuff at the first blaster of maze. Just like in the Princess Quest ending, where we go there to free Vanny from Glitch Up, but Freddy is attacked by her stuff bots. But in the Princess Quest ending, the pizza plex is not collapsing, and in that ending, Freddy is so broken that he dies. Or Gregory takes his head, which I think he will still have on his shoulders in ruin. And here he seems alive, even if he will be evil this time. Perhaps after the burn shop ending, Freddy somehow got to the Father Blaster where he was attacked by Benny, but Freddy was kinda saved by the fact that the pizza plex was collapsing and the walls of the maze started falling on them, preventing Starbots from fully disassembling Freddy. So I think the burn trap ending is still canon one. Well, Ruin itself will be the Princess Quest ending, and Ruin will play as Cassie, while in the Princess Quest, the princess was called Cassidy in the files until it was removed. Then in the trailer we see that Cassie will have Venice's mask, which won't be the one from FNAF SP, even though we do see Venice drop it in that ending. But instead, it is really similar to the one from FNAF VR, because of the tuft of hair on the top. And in the Princess Quest, we need to find the FNAF VR mask to beat it. Then at the end of the Prince's Quest ending, we open a door, we surrounded by purple with a green keyhole, just like the colors of the logo on the computer teaser. And let's look at what those logos said. We hear voices becoming screams. And when we open this ending door, we hear a scream. And we hear shadows within shadows, could be referring to the shadow-like entities in Princess Quest that come out of shadows and attack us. While in the ending of the first Princess Quest, we see a big glitch up like shadow creature, with tears coming out of its eyes, which reminds a lot of the shadow creature at the end of the ruined trailer, who looks like if he is offering us a teal, or even luring us in somewhere just like Glitchrop. The creature in Princess Quest shares some similarities to the Blob, and last time we saw Burntrap, he was absorbed by the Blob, and perhaps he will control it, building this new body for himself. Like in the Feather Frights, we had an often amalgamation created out of all the destroyed parts that contained agony of William's doings. 
And so I think that through the ruin, we will be metaphorically playing Princess Quest to save Gregory from Glee Trap. Or perhaps we'll actually be playing those Princess Quest games, which contain Cassidy, just like FNAF VR contain Glee Trap. And the more we play them, the more Cassidy will be able to escape into real world, like Glee Trap and use Cassie like her Vanny. We first saw Princess Quest in the FNAF Help Wanted Mobile. As we know, Glitchup got into FNAF VR when some old circuit boards were scanned. What if Afton, or the thing that represents Afton, is not the only thing that got in, but Cassidy too, or something mimicking Cassidy, in the form of the princess in Princess Quest? Wherever we see Afton, we also see Golden Freddy, so what if Cassidy is back too? In the Princess Quest files, there was even a phrase in glitch text that translated into It's me, which is Golden Freddy's iconic lines. And we see a golden statue of Freddy in front of the girl, which could be a symbolism for her being Cassidy. So here's my theory. After the burn trap ending, Gregory gets stuck underground, but Freddy somehow finds a way to get out of there. But then he is ambushed by Fanny and her starbots. But before they can fully disassemble Freddy, the wolves collapse on them, saving Freddy partially. After some time passes, Gregory somehow hacks in or something and contacts the only person he can trust, his friend from school, Cassie, who will go to the Pizzaplex to save Gregory from the Pizzaplex and perhaps even from Glitchrap. And along the way, she will do the Princess Quest either literally or metaphorically. So yeah, tell me in the comments who you think is Cassie and the Shadow Glitch and what will happen in Ruin. Or you can join my Discord server in the description below and talk about it there. But for now, that's it. Subscribe to my channel, do not miss any of my videos, press the like button with a bell, and remember, I always come back.